Hi folks, Dom Lawson here at Machine Head at HQ. I'm here with Rob, Chris, Logan and Jared uh, and we're celebrating Burn My Eyes and the forthcoming 25th anniversary tour. Uh, and we're going to listen to what can only be described as some ignorant Oakland metal shit. Yes! yes. Slow. Copyright Jamie Jostak. Yeah. Shall we start with uh, the first song that you wrote for the record? Yeah. Way back it. in... 1992. 1992. Yeah. Maybe 91. 91. Wow. Death Church. Yeah, Death Church. Roll the tape. <laughs> the tape. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Play Spotify. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is all from uh, the Charles Manson movie. Oh, yeah, we got all these I, I got all these samples. I was watching this shit over and over on loop. I grabbed it on my videotape, edited it, and then brought it in. And, uh, and on the demo that we did, it was like all normal, but they were like, no, you gotta fuck that shit up to put it on the record. Yeah. I love the way the ride came out. Right. It became signature for me. I, was, yeah. I brought it to these sessions, <laughs> you know, for this. The ride symbol. Yeah, the same yeah. I've, I've kept it the whole time. And I put it on every record I've recorded. It's almost well, Do you remember, was this the first song that we played with you? Yes. Was it? Yeah. It's the first song I ever heard of Machine Head, obviously, when, when I first got together with you. Yeah. You, you played this is the first song and it? Okay. Yeah. this is a good first song. This is it, like it starts like here. I want you to check out some new shit. Like yeah. this. Like, like... God bless at this point in time. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of street players. You were really enamored. Yeah, I was crazy about that record. Right? Yeah. And probably Neurosis. Yeah. You know, like we were, I was going to see Neurosis once a month for, yeah. you know, yeah. oh my God. Like the Souls at Zero era, where they were just kind of starting off with the visual. Yeah, oh my, yeah. And it was just so fucking heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that I was so stoked on all the space of this song. You know, the music I was doing was, you know, either real fast or like with Grinch, a little bit more experimental. I remember like, damn, there's just miles between the hits. You know, it's like. <laughs> you don't grab a bite between those hits. It was just like, I remember like the immensity. Even we're recording on a boom box and a little, we're on top of each other. I remember like, Damn, this yeah. is space and shit you're coming up with. Yeah. The new tuning, you know, this simplified meat, you know? Yeah. When was the last time you played it live? What's that? When was the last time you played this live? 96. What? 1996. Damn! Yeah. Lots of O's, brother, man. Oh my god. <laughs> it's all O's. <laughs> Everything's O's. Yeah, that was the, that's the ground zero. It's the ground zero of Machine Head song. Yeah. I remember coming to your house in Oakland. Uh -huh. And the first time I heard them, you said, I want the band to be called Machine Head. That was the first time I heard the name Machine Head. Okay. And you played this on your guitar for me. It wasn't recorded yet, obviously. Oh, shit. Yeah, you played this whole whole thing for me. Okay. And I remember, I really remember that, uh, yeah, you told me the band's going to be called Machine Head. And 
you had a lot of confidence and you said that you think it's going to be big. And, you, and, and I believed you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah, I bought, I'm stoked. I'm, yeah, I bought into that too. That's crazy. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I don't remember that at all. The blue house in Oakland, like, well, I think Adam, did Adam live there too? Or was it, you were a two story oh, right. house? Yeah, that was in Berkeley. Berkeley, yeah. Yeah, Berkeley. Berkeley. yeah. 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 on uh, Grant. Yeah. So, Killer. Do you remember writing this then? I do. I remember writing this in, uh, I lived in Richmond at the time when I wrote this in an apartment. And I, I had originally brought it to violence as a new violence. I was in violence at the time. And I brought it to them. And, and violence was kind of going for this different thing. And it was obviously, you know, violence is super fast thrash. And here's me bringing this really slow song. But, and, and tuned so, down already? Or was it? It was tuned down. Yeah, we yeah. were tuning down in violence. I was already oh. drop tuning in okay. violence. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it was just kind of like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And I was like, well, I'm just going to start this thing called Machine Head and, you know, I'll just do it and I'll be in both bands. And violence was kind of going, you know, we had yeah. a lot of free time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll just do this. And it was cool. And then I just kept on writing. And, uh, and then, yeah, I guess I showed it to you then. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the first time Death Church was actually played? Like as a, as a how did that cut? Well, I was, I was a huge longtime Attitude Adjustment fan. I worshipped Attitude Adjustment and saw them a gajillion times at Ruthie's yeah. and all yeah. over the place. And he yeah. was in another band called Grinch, who I also loved. And so I was my, my ideal person to play on this was like if I could get Chris to play on this, it'd be ridiculous because he just has style and this flair that I think would be yeah. amazing for it. So. Can't remember. I mean, I'd probably just talk to you oh, at a Grinch it, show or yes, something. You yes. know, like it was at the house party in Emeryville. Remember, we played the living room. Grinch did. Yeah. Okay. We played the living room at at Mark's um, in Emeryville. Oh, where I the, lived. yes, at the, the Strasburg. At Logan's we played, house. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. shit. We okay. Played, we played in the living room, and oh, I remember fuck. you stood dead center <laughs> off my kick drum, dude, just like. <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, shit. Because I was always, I was always super stoked to see Rob at AA shows and stuff, you know. Because yeah. we're a crossover band, right? So I'm like, there's your dent, right? There's some, you know. And uh, I was always stoked about that. And then when Grinch happened, so different, you know, closer to Neurosis is kind of energy, mm -hmm. and, and a little bit more. Uh, a little proto, bit of Jane's maybe in there. Yeah, yeah. a little Proto Tool, some um, Amoebics. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was pretty expanded in sound, and that he was into that too. I was like. Oh, this is cool. But then I, that night, I remember using, well, you broke it down to me. You told me about the ministry thing yep. and how you wanted to offer fresh. You had this fresh batch of songs that you had only played, but you had not played with a drummer yet. Yep. It was guitar rehearsals, mm -hmm. you three. And uh, you were like, we're going to record. And I remember we got Damien Gallego's awesome giant boom box that okay. had awesome condenser mic. Right, yes. Singer for Fungal <laughs> That's Mungo. what I told you. I was like, it wasn't mono, it might have been two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it sounded great. Fungal Mungo demoed on this boom box, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not like the mixing board that did Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's like Fungo a boom box. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it's just to rewind awesome. a little bit, awesome. I had been hey, asked to play juju guitar juju juju as a touring juju guitarist juju for sure. ministry. Right. And I didn't want to send them violence tracks. I wanted to send them just something new. So I was like, you know, like, ask him, you know, we were already jamming, just like, let's do this. And then he made it happen. And you're, it was in your jam room, wasn't it? Yeah, we went yeah. down to the Grinch's jam room and we had the PA kind of set up and everything, we're good to go. Yep. And uh, there was no job opportunity offered. It was come demo this stuff. I've got Joey Bag of Donuts coming out from Cincinnati to be the drummer. Mm -hmm. What was his last name? Uh, Cicciano? I, yeah, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> yeah. Joey, Bag of, Joey and, Bag of Donuts is perfect. Yeah, right? <laughs> he was from this band, Horde of Torment or whatever, and he wanted to get, but then, yes. and I was going to New York to sell a band, uh, Verbal Abuse and Grinch out the CMJs, mm. and I came back, and that's kind of, he never showed, you were approached by Tony, mm -hmm. one of his students. Mm -hmm. Living in Vegas and right. stuff. Let me in there. And I came back and I was like, fuck, I want this job. I mean, he was already <laughs> in two other bands. So, like, yeah, I, yeah. as far as I was concerned, he was kind of like already busy. Uh -huh. He was going to, you know, sell his band and, you know, stuff. So he was shopping and I was like, yeah, he's already doing his own thing. Yeah. If I could just get him to play these songs, it would be amazing. Yeah. But I wanted the spot so bad, I roadied for this fucking band first. Right. Yeah. I, I did oh, yeah. four shows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Four shows. That's you guys, true. that was a roadie setting up for. Yeah. 
when we came down to LA, right? LA, LA played Gazzari's, yep. played Found Vegas, Fest, yep. yeah. played Vegas. It was like during Foundations yeah. convention, but we were in Foundations. We, we in. snuck in with fake Lammy. Yes. Yes. And Andy yes. Yeah. yes. She even made a fake little fucking hologram because it was one little hologram. That's tried to right. Do a safety net. That's we right. We snuck into that motherfucker, and I'll tell you, by the time we were back next year, we were what, signed. Yeah. 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 No, I sure. talked to I talked to Monty that at that thing. And I was but like, I remember doing lights. I remember doing lights for Machine Head, and I'm in this little box and gets already sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Steve from Skin Lab and Ricky Hunel from Exodus come in, and Ricky opens the door and goes, "You're taking this fucking job, right?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Working on it." <laughs> Close. Working on it, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, because. Ricky's 100. I couldn't fake as well. I'm yeah. with him. So, so. Did, some other songs were getting written, but before Chris actually ended up as the drummer, while Tony was. Yeah, I was just writing on my own, and I was just saying, "I'm going to want to do this," and then gotten Adam and Logan and I were jamming just in our bedrooms, our you know, our prospective bedrooms, working on stuff. Yeah. We jammed. When we got together with him, we jammed. Death Truth was the first song that we jammed, mm -hmm. and then I think Block, and then. Blood for blood. Uh, blood for blood. Yeah. Yeah. So we tracked those three with him that first day. Right. I totally that forgot cool. about the ministry thing. Yeah. Uh, until now, I just tell you right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being so enthusiastic about the verses for for Block. Yeah. Just fuck it all. It just that the, the <clears> rolls came yeah. out of me because the way you. I was like, like that is so dope. I just. Remember, there were things that just were like lighting me up about it, mm. you know. Even while I was in New York, I was still like, wow, Rob's got some fucking sick ass meat on the plate right now back home, you know? So, yeah. So, where did it go from those three songs being, the, I guess, the starting point? Did you, mm -hmm. were, was it clear in your mind where, what the entirety of the sound was going to be then? Was that, or did it just kind of evolve organically? I, had, I had a pretty clear vision, you know, looking back. I mean, I, I mean, I was putting it all, I was kind of manifesting it on like, I mean, just even when we started selling the demo, it was like urban reality, ungodly brutality, like industrial, you know, like I had, I wanted Alice in Chains in there. I wanted kind of ministry sound collage thing. I wanted it, you know, I was trying to get away from the thrash thing, but I was writing thrashy stuff, but I didn't want it to be thrash. Mm, yeah. You know, I wanted it to be new. I wanted it to be fresh. I wanted it to be something different. and. I don't know if I knew what that was right then, but I was like, this is where we gotta go. Yeah. You know, we gotta look different, we gotta sound different, we gotta be something new and fucking blow people's minds. Yeah, so how did the next batch of songs come together then? So those, the next one- So then we got, we got a drummer, Tony Costanza, and Chris was still doing Grinch and Verbal Abuse, and were you in AA then? No. Okay. No, I was just out in New York for yeah. five months or something. Oh shit. That, Okay, that long? so then while he was doing it, I get you know, not shortly after that, I guess if that was in June, we got to, we played our first show with Tony in August, right? So we must have got Tony right almost immediately after yeah. that. That that was the house party at, at yeah, Mike's at house. Scums. yeah, yeah, and so we got Tony, we had him learn Chris's parts, and then we wrote. Thousand Lies, uh, Rage to Overcome. We, I think we had six songs. We have enough, enough songs to uh, play a house party. Yeah, cover. <laughs> Which was our friends. Uh, he was getting evicted, <laughs> so it was a destroy the house party. <laughs> it's a Berkeley <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, house yeah. wrecking party. Yeah, and so it was right across the street from this punk rock house. And we went over there and were like, if we played six or seven songs, I think we had. A, I think we might have even done Alan's on Fire at that point. Like we might have done yeah. a cover song too. Yeah. And. Uh, and so we played our first show. It's just this house party with a bunch of punk rockers and metalheads, and basically just everybody got to like fucking take sledgehammers and break <laughs> shit. And fucking, yeah. we were the Good soundtrack, time. and it was like fucking cool first show. Yeah, yeah. this works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was my first show ever. Yeah. Any band ever. Yeah, yeah, Logan hit that. Was it was like yours and Adam's first yeah. show ever, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I so, did you want, so can you? Do you want to pick another song, maybe from that um, one of the ones you would have played at that first show? Sure. Like. Thousand Lies or what? Block. As far as what came next? Yeah, I mean, I guess the I next thing. By that point, Tony would have been in, so it would have been like block. Rage or Thousand or. I feel like Block came in. Yeah, Block was early. with Chris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We already passed that. In that first three. Yes, and then the Emeryville rehearsal place. Mm hmm. With the god awful racket. 
band and they said god awful drum kit or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Kit. Yeah, by then we had moved into there, right? Okay, I think so. And yeah. we were rehearsing at a place called the Emeryville Warehouse, which is just like this desolate, barren warehouse, yeah. meat packing district. And uh, we sh we didn't actually, we shared it with about probably 15 other bands. Yeah. And we just, you'd, it was pretty cool. Like it was like, a, you'd set up your gear and then you just stick it over in the corner and it was like a, yeah. a trusting thing that nobody would fuck up your shit. And yeah. you know, we just come out and you'd set up, you pay like an hourly fee. Yeah. So that was really all we could afford at that point. Yeah. And, and just rehearse and we and it was it was a cool vibe the dude who owned it was like a super tweaker he's like yeah. fucking cia spying on me he'd stay up for days on end but he kind of left us alone and it was just covered with punk rock flyers and neurosis flyers and metal flyers and it just had this grimy yeah. vibe that i think really did seep into you know all the other bands were punk rock bands and so that mm. like very political punk rock bands of the of the 90s oh, yeah. like that you know super, yes yes totally mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. and that all somehow started seeping into you know everything really i mean yeah. i should i think rancid is coming out of there were that, they there i, I okay. think they were for rancid sure. was around for sure yeah, yeah. i was going to see yeah. them before they even had lars yeah yeah mm. i remember marty yeah that was a uh, uh generator generator yeah right yeah I remember loving those rehearsals because for me it was really new experience to play with a band and I got out of my bedroom with a practice stand but then we had, you know, a full band and a PA and just like listening and being blown away by just like how cool it sounded and how fun it was and I remember, we, you know, new riffs would come in and we would just play them for ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, this is before cell phones too so there was, you know, this was this was our focus and this was our thing, no yeah. one interrupting and we'd just yeah. bring in like bottles. We used to drink this shit called Cisco, oh, yeah. which is like, <laughs> you know, like a bottle this big serves four. It's basically oh, okay. formaldehyde and alcohol. <laughs> and super cheap. <laughs> just, it's like a dollar and we'd just get drunk on that shit and then just play riffs and probably I, my fondest Cisco memory is when we wrote the, when we wrote the riff for uh, Rage to Overcome, mm -hmm. the main chorus riff, but ba 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 and so, like Adam had just gotten a pager, which was like the equivalent of an iPhone back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. You got a fucking pager? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> and, and so it was like, you got a pager, so da 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 da. I got a pager, but da 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 da. And we played that riff for probably twenty minutes. Yeah. You know, Imagine. just like laughing yeah. our fucking asses off and just. Should we play that Stupid. one? Stupid. Yeah, yeah, let's play that. Ready to overcome. Because that's, uh, again, not one that's been played live much. Probably 2004, oh. Ashes Tour. I think like yeah. Neurosis was the only band around that was fading in harmonics. Yeah. You know, that beep, beep, using like Steve used a lot of them. And I remember your your approach to it was so cool. And it wasn't just the pinch harmonics, there were these natural cool harmonics. Yeah. Natural, yeah. 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 I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, I learned, like, I learned how to do that because I would be learning like Celtic Frost songs and DRI songs and yeah. go ba, ee, ba, do, 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 and just get feedback and uh -huh. I had an amp that was like four and a half inches big <laughs> and I couldn't get feedback so I was like what is that sound and then I just went ba, dee, and I was like and my head I mean it was wrong I learned it wrong I just thought that feedback was a harmonic so you know it wasn't until years later that I realized what feedback was but so I would just play DRI songs in my bed, crashed out, eep, pipes yeah. of death, wrapped up, you know. And yeah. so I just learned how to go, but eep, 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 you yeah. know. Yeah. Celtic Frost, same thing. And then 
just got it's good at it and then kind of was able to yeah. like incorporate it in. So that challenge to keep finding new ones to put in. What's that? Because you, you use the harmonics in quite a lot of songs, is it hard to find a new way of doing it that's yeah. not essentially I mean, maybe now I'm kind of like, man, do we really need another harmonic? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Lean left. Huh? Lean left. Lean left. All right. <laughs> This is a Logan rip right here. I got a page up. Oh, now do it. Check it out. Always sounds like fire. Like fire crackling. Oh, nice. like, like the big launch. I always hear fire. Nice. I think we sing like wreckage and desolation on that first riff. It's just like... I got a page up. This I, remember, is a <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, can you play tribal beats this long? Yeah. Like I was thinking to myself, is this doable? Because you know, there were guys testing the waters with toms. Yeah, like a tom rhythm. A rhythm right? thing, yeah, but to go on a rhythm. I was thinking, fuck, am I coming up with something here? Yeah. You know, and it, and it kind of felt like if I keep working this and like, like playing a drum roll under an entire verse with a, Fuck it all, right? Yeah. Felt like those were little things that were like became synonymous in the band sound or whatever, you know? And it was like a little risky. I, I felt it was a little risky. Like, is the the listener gonna be cool with just toms forever? Yeah. Yeah. So, I think yeah. That, yeah, I remember like we kinda had some conversations about that, like, should it go on this long? Yeah, you know, like because there was things that Tony did that got these songs written. But when I came in, there was some little groove flips that I did, or a faster or slow thing, you know, or a different approach that I could apply some attitude adjustment yeah. to the fast stuff, you know. So, no disrespect to Tony, but I had to come in and thumbprint what he had yeah. already laid yeah. down, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, it was like a challenge. At the same time, I, I kind of knew I had to do it. To, yeah not play Tony stuff. Yeah. Basically. You had to, you you had to give those yeah. beats an attitude adjustment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well played. Ended on the third one. No, not the yeah, fourth one. Not the fourth three. one. The fourth one went Immigrant too long. Song three. Style. Four's too long. Threes are fun. Yeah, we had some weird timing things yeah. like mm. that. You know, like, it's let's cool. go six times here. Yeah. Let's mm. go three times. It leaves yeah. you're like, ah. Oh. Kind of leaves you like. I remember a big thing that I really wanted with these songs too was I wanted um, a lot of key changes. You know, mm -hmm. like I wanted, uh, I always wanted to have some point where there was, you know, a lot of metal songs up until that point were all just in whatever key it started in. That's the same song it ended. Yeah. And it was like, no. So like the lead is a big mm -hmm. key change, you know. Maybe not Death Church. Death Church is probably the one that didn't have the key change. But. <laughs> But everything else after that, you know, I wanted it to be like none but my own. It's like I want it on the fourth fret. The whole song's got to yeah. be on the fourth fret. You know, not having it just in your open tuning. Yeah. You know, there yeah. were there was a few songs like that. I, there was. And it, a, and it changes at the end too, down to the second, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it never went open. Yeah. You know, there was uh, you know key changes in Nation on Fire. Key, there was just key I'm changes on every. Now. I'm your God now. Was love in, the you know. solo. Where sessions. do you think that did did that come from? Maybe like a bit of a Soundgarden influence, or your because I know you were into grunge and some band like Soundgarden and stuff at the time. That yes, they would do a lot of that. A lot of key changes. You know, yeah. I'm you know I, I, like as I'm thinking back right now, I just remember a Randy Rhodes quote uh, that I read just about that he always wanted to have all the Aussie songs that he had recorded be in different things. And I was like, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Like, that's such an interesting, you know, it makes your life harder because you've got to force yourself to write something cool in another key. Yeah. You know, but if you can pull it off, how much of a payoff you're going to get because every song is going to be in a different key. It's going to sound different to the listener. Mm. It's going to have these little ups and downs that, you know, it's kind of like songwriting craft. And I just, you know, I think that had just kind of stuck with me mm -hmm. and I wanted to apply that. And it was, you know, that song in particular that like, struck me with that out of a kind of out of nowhere key change for the lead. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Cool. I, I just thought that I, was, I remember remembering that was in the music, the key change, the, the classic rock long play mentality of what you were writing for the album. I remember that was like, a maturity thing going on mm. with the music. I was like, man, mm. this is fucking smart. This just isn't what you said. Fucking key, front to back, 
you know, solo section, oh, you know, these pumps, these, these mature moves, you know. I thought it was, I was uh, right then I knew it was like, God, this guy's riding some real shit here, yeah. you know. So it was like immediately like, apparent to me that it just wasn't like Bay Area thrash, yeah. you know. Look, old or something could have easily been Tom Hunting. Uh, oh, right? Oh, shit. Right? Yeah. Easily could have been that. Yeah. And maybe not as special. Yeah. But, you know, Your interpretation. you throw some left, you yeah. throw some ha sa ha ha you throw some sauce on it, and it's a whole different animal. You take a song like Nation, or Rage Overcome, mm -hmm. could have been written a different way. Yeah. And fit in and been sick, but you know I think Tony and myself saw something special's got to happen with these mm. songs, not uh, the Rolodex of your normal Bay Area thrash beats. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah. Was your song? You know, you felt as you were writing more and more songs that it was kind of becoming more and more cohesive as a thing, and because Davidian and Old being two kind of signature songs for the band really came towards the end of the writing. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, I remember. When we started writing, when he brought in the old riff, because he brought in the main, da -na 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 -na, da -da 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 -da. we were practicing in this pretty, I don't even know what it was. It was like some cement, like, it was a warehouse. room. <laughs> it was, was it a warehouse? It was a live workspace warehouse. That's what it was. Oakland style. This tattoo artist named Schmo Dog lived there, and I was, I've rented a space to live. I was living there for. Oh, were, is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he tattooed, tattooed me when, when we were there. Okay. And yeah, he, it was cool to make noise there, so we set up in. I rehearsed there a few times. I That's what it was. Yeah, yeah right on pulled. San Pablo. In, you know, in the hood. In the yeah. fucking hood, dude. Like, <laughs> I remember we used to go there, and and I remember writing the riff to old, and we were kind of just messing around with it. But we always had all the homeless people would line up. At, his back was to the window, and the window had bars all over it, and all the homeless people would kind of line up, like, and kind of listen to the jams that <laughs> these fucking concert. white boys were playing. <laughs> Concert, yeah, it, it would, it, it would, and we'd sit there and we'd jam like the hip hop songs of the time. We'd play like Cypress Hill, or we'd play Snoop Dogg, and it's kind of, and everybody, like, oh shit! <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> fucking white boys know some hip hop. You know, like it would, like it was the party would be started. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> and God. that, you know, that probably, in a way, you know, maybe in a subtle way. I mean, we were all listening to hip hop at that time, but yeah, that. Time. You know, it was seeping in from yeah. so many different places, and even that, just like, oh shit, look at us, like rocking the fucking streets here. Yeah, yeah. Like, we should we should continue to do this. And I don't know if anybody said that out loud, but it was probably a yeah. subconscious thing that yeah. we felt. Yeah, yeah. I think our hip hop influences at that time <laughs> made us hyper aware that metal at this point was right, and we were like, shit. The fuck, uh, uh, you know, yeah. this other thing was happening with this. With, I used to call it knee lifting metal before it was. What did you call it? Knee lifters metal. Knee lifters? Yeah, because it was like. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> that, was the dance, that was the dance of the time, yo. For real, real spit. That was the dance of the time, right? I mean, after, it's all funny, after the, after the rap metal thing takes over and it starts to become. Yeah, a this thing, is way before yeah, rap yeah. metal was. But it was starting to happen. I said, oh, we're going to watch Knee Lifters Ball, right? Instead of Headbangers <laughs> Ball, because everybody was starting to be like, oh, this street cred thing was happening. And it was based on our like love of NWA and Wu-Tang and, Wu -Tang, and Wu -Tang, Public yeah, Enemy. Yeah. And, you know, you got Feel the Noise, right? Well, if you got Walk the Way or Walk This Way, Run DMC, and then you got Feel the Noise with Anthrax, that's closer to where we're at, you know, the Anthrax uh, Public Enemy thing. So definitely Oakland and hip hop seeped into mm. the grooveability of it. Not just a groove, but yeah. we're trying to get people moving. Bit of yeah. You bounce, know? Maybe. yeah, different bounce. We saw it on the audience immediately. Kids went from fist bang mania to like fucking what up? Fucking uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm so absorbed in this beat right now, you know. I think it was a cool thing and I think we were kind of aware of that happening, you know. Yeah. Lyrically, too, I would say. Yeah. I was definitely throwing in, you know, rap flows from my favorite artists. I was then putting into, you know, why did attack, black, black, attack, back the fucking media? You know, all that yeah, shit yeah. was like straight out of, you know, the shit that I was listening to at the time. And, and for me, you know, I think that we were drawing on a lot of punk rock and just... You know, metal at that point, back in like 92, 93, like it had, re like lyrically had really just kind of gotten away from anything that I was connecting with. 
You know, I was getting way more anger out of Poison Idea and NWA and Public Enemy, very street, you know, very fucking just, you know, pissed. It was just so fucking angry and pissed, and that was, that was the shit that I was feeding off of a lot, you know. Neurosis, I, you know, I can't understate the neurosis importance. That was sure, like yeah. a huge, they were from Oakland, we were going sure. to see them all the time. But, you know, that definitely, you know, and that even more bled into the hip hop thing too, you know. Because there was a trend going on with metal. It was all going black and white, and it was, you know, you could replace the Metallica photo with fucking Naomi Campbell. You know? It was starting to become black and white and in the desert and <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, boots, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and glasses, everybody in sunglasses. Yeah. It was starting to become this black album thing with all the testament. Yeah, and yeah everybody. Everybody wanted yeah. to kind of go down that. Everybody that, copied the black yeah. album. Like, you know? And we yeah. were like, Shit, I stink. Like, you know, we're dirty and drug dealing and living on top of each other in warehouses and rental Victorians on pizza boxes and our girlfriend's money. And, and you know, it was like yeah. that energy was like that street, you know, that is not modern rap metal. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? I need, I need to ask about Davidian in that context then because, you know, I, I remember a recent interview that I did with you when you were saying about the, the, the riff rain in the chorus and how that kind of stemmed from you being in that lifestyle of, you know, lying on a rooftop with a shotgun and... Fucking, that song, that song came about, like, I don't, you know, we were, we were at Josh's place at that point, mm -hmm. right? Which you, Another did you warehouse. live there? Did yeah. you live there? We, we both did. lived there, You both yeah. lived there, okay. Yeah, yeah. and we, they, you guys had the upstairs loft and then he was turning the downstairs loft into like a rental, like we a rehearsal could, space or we something. We had a little rehearsal space that also could work as an editing bay for him because he was just coming out of uh, CCAC. Okay. Doing filmmaking, right? So we had, remember we had the big sl sloped wall to do right, video right, shoots right, together. Right, right, yeah. So he was kind of trying to do a film music studio aspect. As well as grow weed. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Multi -talk. Large yeah. amounts of weed. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Always have a backup. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we had just a small, our room was really small. Like it might have been, it was probably smaller than this room, you know? Yeah, like it was just like, wall here, it yeah. was a small bedroom maybe, like nothing yeah, on the yeah. walls, like just piercing pain, like when you played, just cymbals. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was probably about from here just to fine. him, like yeah, playing yeah. and mm. writing. And, and low, I think you might have brought in, I might have had the, I remember we had the middle riff for a while, even with Tony. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then I think you maybe brought in the intro. The intro riff, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yep. it fit somehow. You, you, I brought that riff in and you fit the rest. You, you just put yeah. it all together. And then I had the, another riff that was kind of like an Exodus riff. Like, it always just sounded like an Exodus riff to me. Da, 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 da. Like, it could have been Toxic Walls. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. And I remember you even played that the first time. I was like, no, no, no. We got to do something. It can't be Toxic Walls Part 2. And uh, and then we just we put it together and we wrote the the ending somewhere. And somewhere along. And, and the lyrics took a while for that. I remember the lyrics took a long time. I had three, I remember the first time we played it was at the warehouse party that, mm -hmm. I'm not sure who, but we played a warehouse video in East that. Oakland. Mm -hmm. Is there? Uh, uh, reality check. Oh. No, 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 it wasn't the way, it wasn't that, it was somebody else's, like, we played in, like, the driveway oh, of a warehouse. That's right, in the, in the, in the fenced-in area yes, outside. Yes, yes. And that was the You're first totally time we played it, and right. I had three lyrics, mm -hmm. and the chorus at the time was, Get the fuck up to the bone breaking groove. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't let Peter be with the shotgun blast, and we're playing, and there's all these people raging, dudes, and fucking like they've got like you know ice chests on their fucking head, just smashing into fucking people. And I'm sitting there like, get the fuck up to the bone. And I was like, this shit is so fucking whack. I'm like, oh my god. Like I remember just in that moment, like I have to change this or I will die tonight. Oh, fucking great. It was just the dumbest shit, yeah. and I was like. Fuck you that. should bring that back. That's yeah, funny. no, that's funny shit. <laughs> Immediately, like yeah, I think it was changed within within a day or two. It was changed. <laughs> Did you ever sense when it was written and complete, and you'd kind of nailed what you wanted it to be, that it was going to be a big song, or is that impossible beforehand? I don't, I don't know if I felt that way. You know, I mean, I didn't feel that way. I felt that was a good song, but I didn't think I didn't think it was going to become the song that it was. I mean, even when we were doing the album, we were going to open the record with Death Church. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> it was actually Colin. <clears throat> it was Colin Richardson who talked us into Davidian. He was yeah. like, oh, it seems like, what are you thinking? Like, it's, gotta, I, uh, it's gotta be Davidian. When I came up with the intro fill, right, that's based on like Stargazer, uh, Over the Mountain. Every badass fucking record or song should start with something great on the drums, right? Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't gonna get the leader of Stargazer by Cozy Powell on the Rainbow record. That's too long, right? Yeah. And I knew that I love the right? Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> but I knew I had to mountain. do something special for this, right? Something quick, flavorful. Did you, did you come up with it immediately? Like, or was it no, later I, on? No, I cultivated it. I think I was like, what's it going to be? And then I remember we, the first time I kind of remember it being kind of nailed was at a Berkeley Square show. That you played show. it? Yeah, the okay. Berkeley Square show. Okay. And I went, and just I was like, oh, that's it. Like, that's going to be the fucking one, you know? Should we listen to Davidia? We yeah. should. style is like really interesting and just like like it's really hard for anybody else to emulate uh, <laughs> I mean it, it's hard for Logan to emulate because it so. sucks no. <laughs> um, I, I just I never played lead guitar before playing with you know with Machine Head and I was assigned to yeah. this is your lead you're, yeah, you're playing yeah. lead now so yeah, I just yeah. like I, whatever came out was I don't know it was just organic and Seven solos. I never had, yeah, I never had, uh, you know, any lessons or anything. Although I did take like a guitar lesson or two from you. Do you remember that? You didn't learn any nothing. I <laughs> you didn't learn the, anything from me. the bend. You taught me the oh, one okay. two string bend. That's all I remember learning from okay. it. I paid, right. I paid you for a guitar lesson. That was yeah. the only time I ever had a guitar lesson. Now, the rest of it, you I definitely was, had like your own. I was on my own. Yeah. You know, I didn't. Was. And yeah, I, I was given them, you know, I, uh, unlike traditional kind of guitar solos, I wasn't giving them really melodic things. Like all of it was really like minor and yeah, like yeah. one, you know, open one, four, yeah. you know, all evil notes. So it's like, it couldn't be like the, the standard pentatonic. It couldn't be like the sad notes. It had to be like yeah, kind of evil notes. I yeah. Some trippy yeah. minor notes. Yeah. Another thing I, I never, when I was t learning how to play guitar and teaching myself, I never like learned my favorite songs. Only mm -hmm. like, 
you know, Iron Man, Paranoid, Smoke on the Water. That's the extent mm -hmm. of songs that I would learn to play from other bands, and the rest of it, I would just, I would started writing riffs from, from basically from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. shitty, I mean, this shitty was his, first, this was his first thing, his first show, his first band, his first, you know, you get a couple of rehearsals at the yeah. Paradigm or whatever, but I was kind like, of it was priming you to be an AA, if you remember. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, you came out on the road it's with the band, a couple not Alcoholics times. Anonymous, right? No, yeah. Yeah, Attitude, Attitude Adjustment, adjustment yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we were... Yeah, definitely, AA came... Definitely, definitely, definitely probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You might have been playing for AA 14 years later. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, at this point. One thing I like that's really similar is that you still do it now. You just be like, like, the first one that comes out, just like, go. Like, just get it out there. Just like, boom, what comes out first? And like... And you'll just really take that because it's like it just captures that moment. And For like, sure. And it's and it's For always sure. been that way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I totally am a believer in that. That like so many times, just your first like, just fucking capture it and like who knows what it's good, bad. Listen to it the next day or two days later and be like, holy shit! Like you captured some fucking amazing moment, you know. And it's almost like not knowing what you're doing is so important. Mm. Like if you mm. have figured it all out, like yeah. something might get not not always, but like. A lot of times, that's like that first inspiration just Instinct. captures magic. Yeah, yeah, so, like uh, the stretch at the end. To, uh, 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 we thought we were so boss. <laughs> with the weird ever, little time. Yeah, yeah we were one on the end of the frame. Yeah, I remember we were like, Ugh, that's <laughs> tiny music writing, but yeah. whop, girth instantly just. Yeah, you know, just and remember. it was probably like a challenge for us to play. So like. Because we, you know, we were still getting good and getting gelling as a band, so it was yeah. like when we finally did get it, you know, and didn't fuck up the, of every other one. Yeah. It was like <laughs> we didn't fuck it up. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you remember how you felt when you finished in the studio with Colin and you sat and listened to Burn My Eyes for the first time? Did you, do you think any of you <laughs> knew what you had on your hands? <coughs> or... I, I don't know. I don't remember when I did listen to it for the first time. I remember well, listening back at Fantasy on the really loud on the just the faders up, not mixed, and being really stoked. And yeah, I remember it not working being mixed there. Well, the mix. I'm yes, talking about right. playback. Yes. We could not control the low end that we created. Yeah, yeah. But after we <laughs> took, we take it to the car, and it's like, what the fuck? It sounded oh, the car to test. totally different than what we yeah, had. Yeah, there. there was there was an issue going right. on what with, with Fantasy. Right. All of the band. We were in the studio at the same time with Rancid. We were in Green there Day. Green Day. Green Day. Tesla. All of us were doing, yeah, Rancid was doing, I forget Jesus. what record, but Green Day was doing Dookie. We were doing Burn My Eyes. Tesla was doing, I don't know. Their something. big record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we would get, you should probably tell the candy story. Sure, sure. <laughs> so we're late nighting it, and we are starting to feel that the mixes are a little wobbly because this is like a room set up for orchestration, for jazz, for softer shit. And we're pushing this. Thing out of it, right? So we go. So Vinny's like, we're already friends with Rancid. We've been doing shows with Rancid, yeah, like these right. kind of, mm -hmm. you know, seminal punk rock metal, yeah. coming together for the first time in a decade yeah. type yeah, shows. Yeah, totally. And they're there. Yeah, they're there. And so it's late night, and Vinny says, oh, "I want to listen to this on the big speakers in A. We're gonna sneak in." We're like, "Well, Tesla's in there, right?" He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so we go in there, and we walk in, and in their little lounge. They got a full candy store set up. I mean, like a rack. Like a rack that big of candy. Like we're like in a liquor store. Oh, da so we're just like, ah, <laughs> back, give me that little right. And we listen back to it. They've got an inflatable goat in there, you know, a sex yeah, goat, yeah. you know, and our roadies <laughs> running around, humping it. You know, and just, you know, it's crazy, you know. So we eat all their candy, and we end up thanking them on the record. You know, thanks, for Tesla. Thanks stuff, for all the for candy. The candy. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Chips Enough from Nuff's Enough is producing a Neil Schoen product, product, you know, project at that time, and I think they were all hyper sober at that moment. Yeah. And Chip is a pot smoking machine. And we're definitely not hyper sober at the time. Right. So he's <laughs> kind of he's kind of grabbing gravitating to our session, you know. And he came in one night with a thumb sized joint, man, and we're smoking this thing in the booth with Vinny and you yeah. and Chip. And Pound in this joint, and we look over, and there's a red light beeping in the in the studio, in the like studio. In, right. in the right. And we're right. like, hmm. <laughs> what's, what's the fucking the red light about, Vinny? And he's like, huh? And then right then we open the doors. Vinny's our engineer. We hear, mm, mm, mm. and we open another set of doors. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, the fucking halon's about to go off. Ah. So get the tapes. You know, this is 
Yeah. Also, this record was recorded like a Fleetwood Rap Mac album. Yeah, on this tape. Is, yeah. This is all two inch tape, a bunch seventy-five of reels on the floor. If you <laughs> tell the engineer, I want to hear take two. Yeah, there's it's... a collective deflating of everyone in the room. Okay, we'll get to that in eleven minutes. Yeah, <laughs> attack the yeah, studio. Definitely not this shit. But... You know, it's like. Mm. Okay. <laughs> this whole fucked process, yeah. right? What was that middle one? Dudes yeah. were not yeah. happy if not you happy. Yeah. would yeah. be an yeah. any other take. Yeah. So we run out into the hallway and the first thing I see is two Berkeley Fire Department guys coming down the hall, big brothers, and they're walking in. Their conversation is, No, they recorded here, fool. No, they didn't. Invo didn't record here. He's like, Yeah, I told you. They recorded here and boom, they stopped in front of their gold record little smear. <laughs> and it's like, boom, homie told you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're pushing carts right now. The entire this is fantasy studios, dude. This is where one flew over the cuckoo's nest was fucking recorded and mastered. Yeah, you yeah. know, Amadeus. All these, all these movie soundtracks. Yeah. You know, yeah. so every person in this building is in the parking lot and we come out all uh, hi. Mm. And the manager of the building is just like mm. Oh my God, she was Nina so wanted to kill us. Yeah. So we go back into the room and the fire chief comes in. And he goes, oh, I see it still takes a lot of that stuff to make a great rock and roll album. <laughs> just try to keep it to a dull roar, gentlemen, and bounce out the door, right? Uh, brilliant. Yeah, so it was that's, just. That's how much weed was getting smoked in the studio. We set Brilliant off, eyes. we almost set off the halons, which would have had us suffocated and dead. Yeah. Band yeah, found. Like it sucks all the oxygen out. So right. you can't have water on, you know, million dollar board or whatever the yeah, fuck yeah. it was. Right. You know, it was a trip, cool time. <laughs> we were there for 40 days or something crazy. Were we? Oh, okay. You know, and we, apple wars, knife, knife wars. fights. Yeah, just Humbly pegged, you know, like <laughs> Joey Houston throwing playing cards into apples from across the room. He's lethal with the playing card and like just killing time in there led to so many hilarious moments yeah. recording that album. I mean, and then when we were done, we listened back to the mix and we're like, this sucks. Yeah. And it really, it, it, did. Was, it was a dent. Didn't, it didn't like something. Every, every band that was in there, Rancid, Green Day, and Machine Head, Everyone all remixed, remixed their records. Mm, we all went to different places and remixed it. And so then we went down to LA to a place called Scream Studios mm. and finished it. And I remember that's where Realize got assembled a lot of. Like that's when all the samples got flown in. You had done some drops though. You had done some muted drops. You're like, bo do 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 do. We had threw in some 808s, which, you know, in 93 was oh, right. virtually that was, unheard that was of. That was mute magic, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, you muted that part. We didn't right. stop. We just kept on going. You were like, oh, it needs a break. And we were like, oh, shit, a dad, that's killer. One of my dad's tricks. Yeah. Sometimes mm. if you just go, oh, wait, vocals and piano here at the, right before the last chorus. Yeah. And then, boom, everything back in. So mm. that was probably just a little key off of my yeah. dad's work. And so while we were down there, they had, it wasn't, it was Primarily a mixing studio. It wasn't really a recording studio, yeah. but they did have a quick little a little vocal booth over in the in the side, and so we were doing that. And I was like, oh, we had the dropout. The dropout went on for a little while, or no, out of the dropout. And I was like, you know what? It needs a fucking vocal there. We didn't have enough samples to make it all work because I think we had played it longer. Our new version was longer, right. so I was like, I'm gonna throw in the realize, realize all that shit mm -hmm. and just this last minute fucking like literally on the last day boom record it fucking run it through the metal zone distortion on everything <laughs> fucking <laughs> yes yeah you know, that's right. the, the metal zone the metal zone yes boot, you know the little stomp box pedal right yeah, yeah. Oh, everything making, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> at one point we ran everything through the metal zone can i go for one second and grab something i think yeah. the uh i think the beginning of blood for blood like is the drums are through the metal zone, all the guitars, all the vocals, the fucking uh, metal zone. No. It's the best place to be, though. In just zone. everything. <laughs> in the zone. Sorry, guys. I just wanted to, I, I brought in the, uh, these are the original. Oh, shit. This is the original tape from the board, from the recording of the record. Are you having my glasses? I can't even see what that. You didn't see that yet, Ralph? Uh-uh. It's crazy. Look at that. Oh, cool. The first one. Yeah. So yeah, I, I preserved this oh, over the years, dude, man. That's and fucking right. All my doodling. <laughs> the hate this is track. Hate. You got <laughs> hate for no reason. <laughs> hate. Write that up, man. Day one. So you got to remember, like I said, this record. Satan Venom. Yeah. The record, too. The, the record was recorded like, you know, any standard rock and roll album yeah. had been, right? So there were times during the mix where we were all on the board. Okay, Logan, all you got to do is go from here to here. And then the next movie, remember we had little pieces of tape, just flick it to there and flick it back. Yeah. 
So it was oh, one, of these hands, yeah, yeah. one of these hands, one of these hands-on mix. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, Chris, you didn't make the move. And I'm like, oh shit, I was listening to the solo. Sorry. And it's <laughs> rewind. We were in danger of beating the face off of this tape, right? Because it's two inch, and we were rewinding and tracking and rewinding and tracking. It was, it was danger of rubbing this. Oh yeah. This hair off of the tape. Yeah. yeah. We we're worried about it. You know, we get to scream and. Janet Jackson's Black Cat had just been mixed out of there. Nevermind had just been yeah, mixed out of there. The Warrant Dog. Oh, that's right. Like that's right. Big ass, powerful albums were coming out of Scream Studios at mm. that time. So Nirvana Nevermind was a mix that is a remix. It was a remix. It was a remix there. That's right. Mm. Terrible. So imagine, you know, like, it, it lets you know like how important a mix is for for sure. And this is when the kick drum solidified. The snare was done there. The, yeah. the sampling of everything. Yeah. I remember yeah, it just starting to crack. And be like, okay, now it's cracking. We're in the right spot. This is gonna sound dope. Yeah. But we were more. Uh, the morale was a little dented when we left Fantasy, and it sounded like utter shit. And the label was telling us that. Yeah. yeah. Not feeling it. And it was bassy and weird and muddy. And why is there a blanket on this record now? Yeah. yeah. And Mo Monty was like, you know, Monty to his credit was like, hey, you know what? We'll give you some more money. This is a big, important thing to us. You know, he came out and. When he heard Davidian, he shit a fucking brick. You know, up until yeah. that point, you know, he came out, met us, seen the. He hadn't even seen. We got signed, signed without. Unseen. We he had. Yeah. He had never seen us play. You know, so it was really just on the strength of, you know, hearing the songs. You know, he really liked me. Yeah. And so, he came back and he was just like, "We'll give you some more money. We'll send you to fucking real studio, pick it with Colin, and just go and make this thing be awesome." And yeah. it was like. Holy fuck, dude! Like this is our shot. Like we gotta fucking kill this. Mm. And we went down there, and you know, there you go. The rest is history. Yeah. The rest is history. Awesome.